So, hi, my name's Donna Rutherford. I've been doing genetic genealogy for about four years now. I did a, my first DNA test uh, back in 2015. But I've been doing genealogy for about 30 years. I started when I was really young. And what I found is that by doing a DNA test, I've been able to help um, help confirm my family tree and help um, break down some of the brick walls I'd found in traditional genealogy. I work in the IT industry. Um, I've worked in IT for a, a number of years and I do all my DNA work after hours. I run a small Facebook group uh, where I help a lot of people uh, in the UK who want some one-on-one -on -one help or group help as to how to use their DNA matches. And that was the presentation I gave today. I was talking about how to make the most of your autosomal DNA matches. A lot of people, when they first get their DNA test, kind of go, what next? What do I do? Look at it. What do I do next? So today I was talking through all the different features, tools and utilities on all the different DNA sites so you can start working on your DNA matches to help solve your family tree like I've been able to do. Um, some things I always recommend when people start DNA, DNA testing is to be prepared for surprises. We do have a lot of people who come to DNA testing and suddenly find that they're not who they think they are. So the surprises when you do a DNA test can be, can be actually good surprises, but there can be some quite bad surprises as well. So it's always, um, we always suggest to people that if you're going to do a DNA test, be prepared that you may find some tr surprises. And if you think this could be a problem, then probably best not to do a DNA test. Um, but if you, ha if you have done a DNA test and um, been working through your matches, one of the things I find really useful with D DNA matching is to start working on your DNA matches in big groups or big clusters. And a lot of the sites now are helping with that by doing auto-clustering for you or giving you all your shared matches. Now, if you're working on one DNA match on their own, you don't know who that person is. They may not even be um, wanting to collaborate with you at all. But when you work on a group of DNA matches, you've got getting that synergy of working on them all together and you can figure out how they all match each other, which is likely how they all match you. Now, a really um, funny story about this um, is I've used this uh, method to do my own DNA researching. And I had a DNA match on my mother's side back about three years ago, and he came from where my mum's uh, family come from in Hull. So I knew that you know he matched my mum's side and that he was probably some, you know matched somewhere in my Hull ancestors. And I looked through his family tree and I realised that no one in his family tree matched my family tree. I immediately thought his family tree must be wrong. And I figured after I did some more research, I'd be able to go back and tell him where the problem was in his family tree. But as we rolled on two or three years, more and more matches came and I suddenly realised that he had a lot of shared matches. So I thought, now I can solve the mystery of his tree. And I realised that all these other matches went back to his common ancestors and not to my common ancestors. So that was really interesting. So I did a lot of research into his family tree and found a family that they all um, were common ancestors of this big group. And then uh, I had a look in the census uh, data at the, uh, around the 1871 census, which is where my great-grandfather was born in Hull. And I realised that this family lived right next door to my family, right next door to my family. You, so the interesting mystery was, why did I have DNA matches to the family that lived next door to my great-grandfather? Now, I'm pretty sure you can't get DNA by going to ask your neighbour for, for a cup of sugar. So I'm pretty sure something else entirely went on. So it was one of the surprises I've found by DNA testing. But actually being able to work on that group of matches all together, I've been able to solve that puzzle and find that I had a big surprise and a big mystery in my own family tree. So my top tip, always work with shared matches, not try and work on one, one single match alone. And those are the sorts of things I talk about in my, in my talk, making the most of your matches, how to use them, how to get your way around the site so you can bring all this information together, solve your mysteries, confirm your tree, break down your brick walls.